Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday, the show where I list my own subjective opinion, my own top five of any given media. Today, we are talking about my top five favorite video games. But first, a word from a special guest. Hi guys, JV Taylor here, author of Unplugged. We're talking video games. Classic video games. We can go like this for days. Um, I mean, you got Mario Kart, GoldenEye 007, Frogger. How many Super Mario Brother games are there? Tons. You got loads of games. Um, I've been playing since Nintendo. You had to blow on it, put it back. Sometimes you had like to balance a book on the game to make sure it worked. Um, a lot of the games didn't have save features for the longest time, so you had to write that out. This was tough, but in the end, what game did I choose? I chose Punch Out. Came out in 1984. Um, you play as this little itty bitty guy called Little Mac. Um, you have to climb the rank of the boxing world. Um, you have to go up against uh, these increasingly unique boxers. You can hit with the left, you can hit with the right, you can duck, and you can dodge to left, dodge to right. This is Nintendo in, in you know the late 80s, early 90s, so it wasn't super fancy. Each opponent... Um, they had their own little visual tell, um, and you had to pay attention. Sometimes it would be like an eye twitch or like a little ruby would blink. You had to pay attention, and when that tell comes, they're going to hit. You can dodge it, you can punch. Deceptively difficult. Um, man, it's, it's a ton of fun. Even today, you can get it with the Switch. I'm not sure about the Wii, but you can get it today, and you can play it today, and it's still a ton of fun. It holds up. This came out in 1984. Still holds up. So, um, yeah. Punch out. It's a classic. It never, never, ever gets old. Oof. Number five. At number five, we have PsyOps. It's an old PlayStation 2 game. I wish they would remake it. I wish I could get it again. Um, I don't have a PlayStation 2. Unfortunately, my broke right around the time the PlayStation 3 came out, so I just upgraded. Um, I still have the disc, but I don't have the capability to play it. I'm not sure if the PS5 has uh, has backwards compatibility with PS2 games. I'm not sure. Um, I don't have a PS5 like many of us, um, just because we can't get our hands on it. I think I'm the only YouTuber who wants one who hasn't gotten one. Just, just kidding. Uh, but anyway, so PsyOps is a game where, uh, you're part of a government agency that's working in psychic operations, PsyOps, you know, but anyways but uh, uh it you as you go through the game you gain more and more powers i almost put control um it's a newer game relatively new last five years anyways um i almost put control here but i i do like psyops more um control kind of feels like a spiritual successor to psyops um especially with the whole secret government agency thing but you're pretty much stuck in certain places in control and in psyops you go damn near everywhere i remember there's one point in time where you go to i think it's either an incan or mayan temple it's just utterly awesome now i love control i love it a lot i have not beat it yet i'm stuck on that cyclops dude um, the second time. I think you fight the thing uh, three or four times from what I understand, but I'm stuck on that. Also, I'm not, I'm, I'm somewhere in between casual and hardcore gamer. I like hard games like uh, Dark Souls. I'm not very good at them, but I like failing and learning from my mistakes, so it's a, it's a game that I really, really enjoy. PsyOps, I just I, I wish it was remade. I remember, the, I remember loving the story. I remember loving everything about the game, and any time... I go through all of my old games, I'm like, man, I really want to play this again. So yeah, number five is PsyOps. Number four. At number four, we have Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, I was working at a restaurant. I was a general manager at this restaurant while, the, while this, when this game came out. 
I remember spending six to eight hours every single night after work and just crashing um, because I, w I was getting no sleep whatsoever when this game came out. Especially because there is one cinematic, I believe it's the ending cinematic of the game, that's almost it's over an hour long. I think it's 64 minutes, might be 74 minutes. But uh, one, of the, one of those, and all of those, it, it's one of those games that you play... I, I feel that you play specifically just to get to the next cutscene. The game plays fantastic also, but uh, so I just I wanted to get to the story. And I love a good convoluted story, and good lord, are, <laughs> are they, Kojima, Kojima writes a, 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 he, he can't write a normal story. Um, just like he can't write a normal villain, and I love that about him. Um, I didn't care too much for the posted, postal simulator uh, he released. What was it? Death Stranding? I didn't care too much for that, but um, I did watch the boss fights. Those were awesome. Um, I wish I would have gotten to one of them before I tossed the game out the window. Um, not literally. Uh, anyways, uh, so Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, that game just kept escalating, kept getting better. Every single boss was something special. Um, I almost put number one on here because it's so iconic, but I think four is where it's at, and I have yet to beat five. I don't know what it is about that one. Um, I think because I was kind of spoiled um, uh, just reading articles about uh, Kojima leaving, uh, oh, who was it, Konami, I think it was, um, him leaving that and going and doing his own thing, and there was either rumor or talk about how the game didn't actually end. It was supposed to have DLC that showed the ending, and instead they did Metal Gear Solid Survivor or Survive or whatever, which was like a zombie apocalypse kind of thing. Anyways, but uh, if you know for sure whether or not the game has an ending, don't don't uh, uh, don't worry about spoiling me because, like I said, I already kind of did get spoiled. Um, leave leave a comment down there in the doobly doo if the game is worth finishing. Number three. Okay, so at number three we are talking about Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, I spent oh way too much time on this game. Um, I still haven't found all the side quests. I still haven't found all the KKK members, or I, I still haven't completed all that. And I spent at least a hundred hours inside this game, just running around on a horse. I, I when I was playing it, I called it Grand Theft Western. <laughs> whatever. Anyways, um, this, this game, it had the fantastic characters, fantastic storyline. Um, the ending was superb. Um, I really, really liked how you switch characters at that point. Um, and then it leads up to the events of Red Dead Redemption 1, which is confusing as hell, uh, hell, excuse me. Um, because also you have Red Dead Revolver, which released way back for, I think, either the Xbox or the Xbox 360. I can't remember. Leave, leave your comments down there in the doobly-doo and let me know. But, uh, with, with this one, it, I felt like I was in the Old West and it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the horse, Riding was a highlight. I just get on my horse and just ride and ride and ride. And um, the only side quest that I did complete in full was getting all of the rare animals. That was a hell of a lot of fun. But I did that early on in the game, and I struggled because I had, you know, I wasn't strong enough to beat them. Didn't have strong enough weapons, all that stuff. Um, but I like doing that in games because it gives me a challenge, and then the rest of the game is a piece of cake once you get all those side missions done. And with a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, you can go damn near anywhere and do anything you want as long as the area is open. So as soon as an area would open up, I would go searching the side quests so that the story missions were that much easier. So yeah, that's number three, Red Dead Redemption 2. Number two. Next up, we have, at number two, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, the, most of these games are newer games, um, just because they, they are better than older games. Now, I know that's going to peak some rage, not peak some rage, that's going to get some rage from some of you, and I understand. I love Mario Brothers, and I love all these other games, but I do like my fancy graphics, and I do like my fancy storylines, and all that stuff. Something that you can't really get anywhere else, except, you know, you can get them earlier on, but I don't think they're as good. And yes... A game doesn't have to be beautiful to be fun, but I like it more. That's just my own subjective opinion, like I say at the beginning of these videos. It's just my subjective opinion. But following uh, Aloy 
um, throughout this massive open world and leveling her up and just becoming super epic and finding the pieces that you need for the super suit, all that stuff. I haven't played the DLC. I plan to get to it uh, before the next one comes out. Um, but I, I remember so vividly these these wonderful, um, diverse characters all throughout the entire thing, and the the class structure was really cool too. The outcasts, you know, all the all the different tribes and everything. It was just a blast to play, and I love games that make you feel like a badass. Hence my number one choice, um, because I am not a badass. You know, I have a badass shirt. It's a little Grim Reaper in a rainbow, and it says, you're next. I love it so much. Uh, anyways, but I, I love games that make you feel like a badass. And this is one, if you crank up the difficulty on this one, this is some of the most intense gameplay you will find. So yeah, number two is Horizon Zero Dawn. Number one. At number one, we have... God of War, the PlayStation 4 reboot to the series. Um, I do love all of the God of War games. I have not played the ones for uh, the PSP or the Vita. I'm not sure. The, the kind of spin-off side stuff that they did. Um, I haven't played those because I can't find them for the PS4. Um, and yes, most of these are Sony games, if not all of them, because I am a Sony fanboy. Um, but God of War is a very special game to me because it is about a, a father dealing with not dealing with the fact that he might not be the best at being a father. He is certainly not the best choice to be a father. Um, the only criticism I have about this game, and I hope that they do more with it later on, is I would love to see more of the mother, the the wife. Um, that that character I would love to see more about it but they did a fantastic job talking you know giving her character development off screen I'm just hoping for more later on in Ragnarok the next one that's coming this game I had I had chills all throughout um, they updated it perfectly um, the controls were updated I know it's like everybody jokes and says press X to win um, but that's not the case if you actually you know bump up the difficulty higher you are going to have a difficult time. Um, in fact, if you put the newest God of War on the hardest difficulty, I would put it up there with Dark Souls. And you have, especially when you're fighting the, those damn Valkyries. I didn't have any problems with any of the Valkyries until I went um, back through the game and I tried to de finally defeat the Queen. I have still not defeated the Queen. I might do that on a stream one of these days. I, re I really want to get back into it. But those Valkyries, well, the, the Queen Valkyrie is, is the hardest one. Um, but yeah, God of War, just a storyline. I loved uh, Atreus' uh, uh, character development, how he... Um, how he was an angsty teenager at one point. He was not really a daddy's boy at one point, but he listened and paid attention, and then he got a little full of himself. It's just normal teenage shenanigans, normal teenage mindset, and I love that they were able to fit that into the game. Um, it made the game far more poignant, and uh, it, it gave the, the story more of a purpose than just, you know, Kratos running around killing everybody and, and screwing, you know, there, there, were the, there were the sex minigames in the original three, which were fun, I ain't gonna lie, they're fun, but this one, you know, I'm able, I was able to play, you know, with my kids in the room, um, especially my youngest, my son, and we would joke all the time, hey boy, <laughs> and, he, and he would talk smack back. Um, and he was just sitting there playing it. It was, it was a very cinematic experience, and I like cinematic experiences. That's probably why I like new games more than I like the old one. The old old games felt more like a time killer, like casual, like Candy Crush kind of thing. Um, I know I'm pissing off a lot of people. I know. I apologize. But uh, um, but with, with these new games, it's, it's like you're playing a movie, and I really dig that because I'm a huge movie buff. So, yeah, number one is God of War. So that's been this week's top five Friday. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave your own uh, favorite video games down there in the doobly-doo. Let me know why you like them uh, so much so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. Almost forgot the show. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!